guys, Courtney here. It's the month of June, um, which marks the release of the movie adaptation of John Green's phenomenal book, The Fault in Our Stars, um, which is sort of representative of a trend, of the new trend in YA literature that's moving away from the paranormal and the dystopian into contemporary fiction, that is, oh, contemporary slash realist fiction. Um, so I thought I'd bring you guys some of my favourite contemporary reads. Uh, to kick it all off is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Uh, your premise here is you've got tw identical twin sisters, Ren and Kath, who um, were raised by their dad after mum left. Um, they're now 18, going off to college, and Ren sort of drops a bombshell on Kath, saying that she doesn't want to live with her in the dorms, um, and that she wants to sort of forge her own life away from Kath. So Kath is sort of left adrift at college with no one with her because it's always been her and Ren. Um, she's socially awkward, um, so she doesn't make friends easily. She's got to deal with the fact that her sister is becoming a bit out of control, becoming, I guess, typical college girl, drinking, going out, smoking, getting out with boys. <laughs> um, on top of all that, she's got a new roommate who she's not really sure if she likes or not, who's a bit of a, a tough girl. Um, and she, She's also got a very cute boyfriend who seems to like Kath. Um, so basically, on top of all that, too, mum comes back into the picture halfway through. Dad starts getting sick. Um, and basically, it's a lot for Kath to take on. She basically finds solitude in her obsession with Simon Snow, which is basically the Harry Potter of this fictional world. Um, the eighth book is about to come out and Kath, who is a writer, writes a fan fiction about the characters of the book and she's determined to finish that off before the last book comes out. Um, so what I love about this is Kath, really. Kath is socially awkward at the beginning of this book and she's socially awkward at the end. She doesn't feel the desire to change who she is. She's comfortable with herself. She doesn't care that she's a bit of a loner, that she is a bit different. She's quite comfortable in who she is. Um, she doesn't have this strong desire to have lots of relationships and um, I think that's quite refreshing because I think today we have this strong desire especially with social media to have, say oh I have 300 friends on Facebook but how many of them are really friends so I found I found Kath really refreshing I think because she was a she's a bit obsessed with Simon Snow and I'm of the Harry Potter generation so I spent 10 years reading those books that I could really sort of relate to her and that desire to read that final book um, and maybe being disappointed with it. <laughs> um, so that's Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Rainbow's also written another phenomenal book called Eleanor and Park. So if you can give either one of those a read, um, basically John Green fan, you will love either of those books. Okay. Next up is All the Truth That's In Me by Julie Berry. Um, now I'm calling this contemporary fiction, but it is set in an historical period. It's not clarified in the book when it's set, but it's evident that it's um, historical at some point. But it's still quite contemporary because there's none of that dystopian future or paranormal um, beings. So basically the story revolves around Judith, who two years ago was banished into thin air along with her best friend. Um, it's now two years later and she returns. Um, her tongue has been cut out so she is a mute, she can't speak and they can't say what happened, she can't say what happened and she's sort of got to try and f uh, fit back into society and into her family. Um, so it's really quite sad. Um, things start to happen and well, her past comes back to her and she sort of can't really hide the truth anymore. Um, so that's your premise. Um, it's quite a shocking story, this one. Um, what I loved about it is it surprised me. I read this thinking, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good, but I know what's happening. You don't know what's happening. You're not a clue. Um, and I love that. I love books that surprise me and have great plot twists right up until the very end. Um, the book is quite, probably a reflection of not just the best that we are humans are capable of, but also the worst we are capable of. It's sort of reminded that not everything is as it appears to be. 
Um, it's a bit of a love story as well. So you've got Judas has a crush on a boy. Um, but he's, you know, apparently marrying someone else. So there's lots of stuff going on. They go to war and things happen. Her brother gets hurt and it changes the family dynamics and what she wants out of life. And it's all very dramatic and it's... It's just a nice book, really. Um, all the truth that's in me, it will surprise you. Um, um, it, it's one that sort of elicits a lot of emotion, both happy, sad, angry, fearful. Um, it's one of those that takes you on that emotional roller coaster ride. So um, it's on the inky list this year for the gold inky. Or silver, I can't remember, sorry. But it's made the long list, so um, I would definitely give it a read because it's one that YA have voted that they really like. So, All the Truth That's In Me by Julie Berry. Uh, next up is Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. Um, you may, um, if you've seen the movie Silver Linings Playbook, he wrote the book to that. Um, and this is his first attempt at young adult fiction. So basically Leonard Peacock is 18 today um, and he's going to kill himself. So uh, he spends his day before he kills himself he has to give, give birthday gifts to his three friends to say goodbye to them. Um, so that's your premise of the story. You follow Leonard as he gives away these three gifts to his friends. You get the background of how he is friends with them. Um, and then he makes his move to die. Um, that's really all I can say without spoiling it. Um, I will admit I struggled through the first hundred pages of this book. Um, it was really weird. There were letters to the future in it. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Um, but once I got through those first hundred pages, I was completely hooked. It was fantastic. It is shocking, devastating, heartbreaking, and so sad. Um, it's one for anyone who's read 13 Reasons Why. If you loved that, you will love Forgive Me, Leonard Peacock. It is... A wonderful story. I have recommended it to a couple other people and apparently I left one girl in tears ready yet so be prepared this is a tearjerker. Okay that's Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. Um, so to finish it all off I've got Hysteria by Megan Miranda um, which is quite an interesting plot one. It's sort of murder mystery. Um, so you've got Mallory who um, basically has killed her boyfriend <laughs> um, and she murdered him in her own home um, and there was a police investigation and she was found to have killed him in self-defense um, so now but he was sort of the good boy of the town the town doesn't believe it they believe she's a murderer and a killer and her parents are treating her differently they can't look at her and she can't talk about what really happened that night she's haunted by it so her parents ship her off to a boarding school um, where she runs into an old friend of the family um, and sort of proceeds to start trying to deal with the consequences of her actions um, She's got her ex-boyfriend, sorry he's not an ex-boyfriend, he's still a boyfriend, he's just dead. Um, mother is stalking her and she's dealing with, I guess, the consequences of her actions and trying to come to terms with the fact that she has killed someone. Um, so it's quite shocking um, and there's lots of little things that go on at the school, not everything because as it seems and there's mysterious groups and typical bitchy girl groups um, and so Mallory is really really struggling um, again this one is one that surprised me um, you're not really sure what's going on um, you're not really sure why did she have to kill him in self-defense if he was her boyfriend um, and slowly the more you read the story the more that comes out and it's it's quite shocking when you actually find out what's happened and why she had to defend herself against him. Um, so yeah, love hurts and love kills, apparently. Um, so it is a psycholog psychological thriller, murder, mystery. Um, and yes, there's a bit of romance in there too. So you won't be disappointed. Um, that's Hysteria by Megan Miranda. Very good. 
Okay, so that's it guys. That's all my reads for you. Um, I hope you enjoy them. If you do, please do let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, happy reading and I'll see you next month. Ciao!